at BC Motors. It's raining. Um, we had to bring in paperwork for the new car that we're getting. And we're going to go out here and see if it's still out here. So we can show the kids, which I think it is. I think it's right down here at the end. You guys coming? No, I don't see it. That's not it. No, because it's a Honda Odyssey. But look at this little car. Look how funny. Look at how tiny the inside is. Oh, that's bad. Ridiculous, hey? Yeah. Watch your head. It's a crab warning. I don't know. Alright, but we're going to let you go and then bring it back All on. Alright, so we found it. This is the Honda Odyssey. And no, that's not a minivan here. It's going to consider it a station wagon. See, Joseph's taller than it. It's got enough seats for everybody. That's the inside. It's got a work detail because uh, we'll explain everything for that later. But we'll talk to you later. Greetings from Okinawa. So, this video is going to be talking about the difference in how it is to get a car in Okinawa compared to what you might be used to in the States. So, the reason I bring this up is because we had this interesting challenge of trying to get a vehicle when we first got here to be able to drive around and get an international driver's license. That in itself um, is, is not entirely difficult per se um, as long as you study the guide because you have international driving rules. But um, the car that we got we realized wasn't quite big enough for what we want to do especially if uh, we have people come to visit so uh, we went to go get a different vehicle. There's a certain set of rules that you have to follow uh, in Okinawa as far as Japanese driving. Um, so they have this interesting insurance that's required and an interesting Japanese style um, inspection that's required from the vehicle. And then they have rules uh, regarding um, your license. So uh, it turns out that you can only have one four-wheeled vehicle per license. So, one car. That's it. And there's rules on how long you can have that car, how long you can sell the car, um, if you can junk the car for scraps or not. And uh, the dealerships here in Okinawa will not trade in. So you can't get a car, decide you don't want that car, and then exchange it for a different car. You have to sell it, junk it, and get a completely brand new car. Um, Kwani decided that she doesn't want an international driver's license. So, in order for us to get a new car, I either have to, one, sell this one, and then figure out how I'm going to get around, and then two, buy a new one. Or, I have to get what's called a waiver to uh, allow a grace period of having two vehicles at the same time um, so that I can get a new car and then sell the one that we have. So... It's an interesting process of doing that. And they're very particular in this process for checking things off, having your license registered, uh, and being able to, to drive on base. So I've spent the past few days going through that interesting process uh, and trying to get that done. So if you want more information on that, I'm sure we'll, we'll get more videos to discuss it more in detail. Uh, but I found that to be very distinctly different and very compared to the states because uh, you can't just buy a car. Um, oh, I will tell you one more thing that is 
definitely uniquely different from here compared to the States. So in the States, you can test drive your vehicle, and the dealerships in the States typically will fix whatever issues you have with that car before you even come up with negotiating for a price based on condition of the car and how it drives. Um, here in Japan, here in Okinawa, no test drive. You don't get to drive the car. You just get to look at it. And you can decide if you like it by turning it on and not going anywhere, but you can hear the engine, you can sit in it, and you can maneuver things around. Um, the rationale behind that is that the selling price of the car that you're negotiating for uh, is meant to predict how much money the dealership is going to put into fixing everything that is required for that inspection I was telling you about. Um, and so, again, if you get a car through the dealership here, uh, the dealership will have uh, the time frame of the warranty and the time frame for the inspection completed, and they're predicting cost for how much it's going to be to get the car worthy of travel for the next two years, which is definitely different than in the States. Um, but that's all for now, and uh, if you guys want to hear more interesting tales about things like that as far as the differences in driving over here versus the states um give us some comments in the messages and as always subscribe and like